afternoon, viewers from around Australia and the world. It brings us to ground one of the Adelaide Football League and the grand final rematch from Division 2 last year. Two newly promoted teams in Plain of Nord Union on their home deck and they'll take on the Div 2 Premiers and also recently promoted Golden Grove Cookaburras here at the Paynham Oval this afternoon. Coaches for the two sides is Jeremy Cheney in charge of the PNU Falcons and Luke Barmby with an outstanding record of 38-2 and two in charge of the Cookaburras in only a coaching capacity rather than player coach this year. My name's Matt Gold, joining me on the call today is Kingley Grouse. Thanks for joining us, Kingsley. No worries, mate. Thanks for having me here. Fantastic day for footy. Beautiful weather. Kingsley Grouse, the Vice President of the Golden Grove Cookaburras, and it's a pleasure for him to join us this afternoon. Game day sponsor is the Classic Catchers, not from the Channel 9 variety from back in the day, but uh, Classic Catchers bringing all the action this afternoon. We'll go through several other match day sponsors very shortly. Ground conditions, it's absolutely superb down at ground level. Uh, the, the ground surface is in great nick, although very, very spongy. So if you see players uh, running up and down that wing position, you may see uh, the ball bouncing back over their shoulder from time to time. The cricket pitch is in pretty good nick, um, as you can imagine, just coming off the back end of the cricket season and some finals campaigns. Looks like the Paynham boys had a pretty successful campaign because there's still the pitch markings from the last game of the season. Uh, current temperature is 19.1 degrees, we're chasing the top of 21. Um, there is a slight wind, it's a southwesterly 10 to 12 knots and it's going straight across the ground and won't favour either team at this stage. We just finished the B grade and in the Magoos it was the Golden Grove Kookaburra successful 14, 13, 97 up against the a local team in Painter Nord Union 7 to 44. For those viewers at home that's a 53 point margin. We'll look at our match day sponsors before we go any further and we'd really like to thank our stream partner again Classic Catchers Division 1 Adelaide Footy League. The scoreboard brought to you by Sportle and Hahn. Filming footy and their footy stats. Dartfish the Farmers League, Roll the Die ra Roll the Dice Racing and the Best on Ground, which will be the Archie's Thongs. Okay, so the Farmers Leap, Pad for Way Winery for the Coach of the Week. Three bottles this year, up from two last year. Three bottles of the Random Shot 2020 range. There'll be one uh, coach selected and maybe from any division, which is fantastic. Roll the Dice Racing, this is a terrific media award for the Player of the Year and the prize is a 5% share in a racehorse who we believe is in training as we speak. The goal of the week is brought to you by Born to Build. And this week's prize is donated by the Wakefield Sports Clinic. The mark of the week brought to you by Bianco. And the winner receives a $100 voucher. Again, that is right across our seven divisions. And you can see all the women's uh, winners by going to Filming Footy uh, Sports social page and watching the weekly footy show, which is Between the Posts, and a new arrangement this year with all footage to be taken on a Sunday morning. A bit like the old school footy show on Channel 7 back in the day, Kingsley. Oh, Sports World, Bruce McAvaney, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So we've got a magnificent clash uh, before us this afternoon. Is it a grand final redemption for the home team? But also, will they maintain the rage of the Kookaburras in Div 1 flight competition this year? What's your thoughts, early doors, on this battle for this afternoon, Kingsley? Oh, well, it's, uh, who knows, with round one, every team has had the same opportunity to have the pre-season. Um, we were lucky enough to re-sign all of our A-grade players with a few uh, additions, so I'm not sure on how Payne and Norwood recruited this year, but uh, a couple of good ins, but um, yeah, it should be a tight contest. Big in for Payne and Norwood Union is Matthew Nunn, coming back from Nord after 182 games. Uh, down there at the parade, and obviously a state SNFL representative as well. As the sides start to make their way out onto the field, got Lewis Johnson there. Interesting to have a 6 4 4 wingman at that <laughs> capability at your disposal. The good thing about uh, Louis is he's uh, very versatile, can play anywhere. So if you can afford to put him on the wing, why wouldn't you? He's got an elite leg, so um, yeah, it's good to see. So got some of the usual suspects in the middle there for Golden Grove and Joshua Glenn and Jake Pittman, the Division 2 medalist from last season. Plethora of experience right there in the heart of the ground, which is terrific to see. As the Plain of Nord Union on board brigade slowly make their way to the middle. 
And it will be Payne with Norwood Union, the home side kicking to the right of your screen. And Golden Grove, the away team, kicking to the left of your screen. Fixturing delight this afternoon, the two recently promoted Div 2 teams back in top flight. The Payne of Norwood Union, Golden Grove. Not, there's been a, a long time in the waiting. Here we go, balls up in the middle. Ball slowly moving out of this centre clearance. Plenty of hard tackling early doors. Ball drifts out towards our broadcast side. Won't quite be a mark. Comes in the hands of Lewis Johnson. Dishes out wide to Shenton. Snare passes into space. Johnson unable to pick up the ball. Some heavy tackling there from Glenn. Should be a mark there. And it is paid. And lands in the hands of Tommy Wagner. So Wagner too far out to score. About 70 from home. Just chips to the arc there and finds Matthew Nunn. So already finding his hands on the footy. Experienced campaigner, one of the recruits of the year in this uh, Division 1. Hits the hot spot. Smashed in that contest. So the ball comes out to
in what may be their first entry inside Ford 50. So can the Falcons even up the scoreboard? Ledger comes out the back there. Good work by Wagner. Unfortunately, didn't have enough support. Stream of hand passes out of that defensive uh, 50. Well worked by Goldgrave and well picked up. Plenty of time there was Dodson. Gets it out the back to a one on three. Easy pickings there for Johnson. Not much voice, but he uh, outmarks his teammate. Johnson plays on immediately. Looking for a play at true heart, center half foot. All comes to ground. She's hard, hard met there was uh, the Golden Grove player and the ball is held up with some strong tackling. And a great tackle there by Steer. So left half forward here for Golden Grove. Ball comes to ground towards Pittman. Gets the ball out towards Johnston. Looking for some support off that back line. High tackle not seen by the umpire. And Payne of Norwood Union with enough to clear their line. But plenty of Golden Grove players sitting back there behind the ball under a fair bit of pressure. Ball comes out towards Johnson. Wax on his left foot. Won't reach. Oh, end up almost being a Falcon. So a bit of extra carry with that ball inside forward 50. Payne of Norwood Union defence under a fair bit of duress. Good hands there by Dodson. So they're chaining up. Comes towards Giannini, Anthony Variety. And they get that ball outside their defensive 50. Strong mark not taken there by Vine. He could have been over the shoulder. Golden Grove mop up there through Osborne. A switch to play. Could be dangerous. Great contest by both players. Ball comes to ground. Shenton's good enough to recover. He goes out wide looking for blades on that far side. Great contest by both players, and I think the umpire's found a free kick for holding on, and so he should. Got a player on in the middle there. Finds Rahui. No, Rahui's actually paid the mark, or the free kick. Changed numbers this year. Very busy in the grand final last year, Rahui. So, Payne of Nord Union, just happy to chip the ball around. That's a bit more length on the ball. It's on that far side, half forward flank, too far from home. Viney lurking out the back, goes in his direction. Will he make the dis? Can't quite make the contest. Rave off hands. Beautiful kick. Jeez, what a magnificent snap. And they've made the scoreboard even, Stephen. So well done there. Great roving goal from the big man. Just, just where you want him to be in that sort of situation. Can't quite see who kicked that goal. So it's a goal apiece here at the Pain of Mobile. Almost entering the half, halfway stage of this opening turn. Been pretty hard to gauge the, uh, the swings and roundabouts of this game at the moment, Kingsley. Yeah, the, the pressure from both sides is great. What should we expect for the first game? Uh, it'll just be whoever settles first, I think. It's going to uh, be a few nervous people. We've got a few new recruits playing today. But, um, so we Golden Grey with 13 players from their Premiership team and Payne of Nord Union fielding 12 of their grand final team as well. Rucks go at it. Great tap there by Robinson, gets it down and met very, very strongly. Was luck on board. A quick kick out of that ruck contest. Punch there with Sanzo, couldn't quite get his hand on the ball. Comes out towards ball, kicks to the right half forward flank for a target. And it looks like both players very happy to see that ball go out of play. We're about 40 from home, actually the umpire's found a free kick. Last position out of bounds in the Adelaide Footy League. Always a bit of a commentator's curse, Kingsley. Yeah, it is, yeah. Keeps you honest though. So left half back, looking for Viney on the far side, ball trickles off hands, some fantastic roving, couldn't quite keep it in play. And Rahui, geez, he's got some speed about him at ground level. So Robinson up against the Solist. He's a new player this year for the Falcons. 
Some strong tackling there. On that far side by Sanzo. Sanzo is rewarded for effort. Quickly moves the ball on. This is where they've fallen down so far. And Golden Grove's been super strong in that defence. And that's Osborne. Switches to Lewis Johnson. True centre half back. Found Lachlan Borg. Switched his goons. He numbed the year. Goes to Pittman. The industrious Pittman hands it out wide to Doobie. Beautiful kick. And some great build up from Lewis Johnson in that back half. Osborne, a rock down there in defence. And it's landed on the chest of Pasco. We'll line up for his second, Big Lenny. So, deliberate approach here from Pasco. Just kicks from about 42. Purposeful kick. Just looks to drift, and it has the far side for a minor score. 1-1 one, one plays one straight. For the first blemish on the scoreboard. Nice kick out of the fence and finds the captain in Matt Nye. Play on quickly. Heading out to that far side towards Viney. He looks like he's going to be a pretty key target this afternoon for the Falcons. And that last possession out of play. Going to be pretty reactionary with this last possession out of play. Yeah. You switched on, you can't just rest on your laurels on that far side. There's no safety in the boundary line anymore, that's for sure. <laughs> no. Chip goes on, it's been intercepted. Great mark there by Sanzo, he's been busy. Bulky played, switched, the, he's turned it over. Oh, that should have been a free kick for too high. Umpire looks like he's paid some sort of advantage. Can't quite take the mark there. Look like Ultimore. You play in the lineup this afternoon. So left half forward for the Falcons. Gee, some heavy traffic. The umpire's found a free kick for holding the ball. And then the recipient of that would be Connor Dodd. So Dodd from his defensive 50. Options drying up. He's found one straight through the middle. The only bloke that really provided a contest. Great kick there by Borg. Open goal square. Can it bounce through? Goes end over end. And the spongy, Brown, has held up. As Tosaulis runs it through for a Plenty of plays there for the Kookaburras. Comes to ground. Some good roving by the big man and Hodges. They get that hair pass over. There's another turnover. We went there by Schwert. Schwert goes to Glenn. Glenn to Pittman. Seen that combination a few times already. Top of the goal square. Some great work there by the Falcons defence. Terrific tackle to hold that one up. And the ball be thrown up. Got 15 out from home for the Golden Grove Footy Club. Got to go for looking for a bit of reward for effort. As the Falcons are holding up well in defence. Nice kick down the line to a one on two, unfortunately. And easy pickings in the end for Slater. Slater dishes off quickly. Another kick, entry inside 50. That's a Falcon, and I think he's taken the mark there, Dylan Wall. You don't see that very often, a Falcon <laughs> slates into a, a, a contested mark inside the 50 paint, but that's the case here. Yeah, another one of Golden Grove's juniors come through the, through the ranks from under sixes. It's good to see him play in A grade. Never like to see a player turn their back on the players. as uh, Dylan Wall has. Has he got the distance and the carry in the leg from about 45? Oh, I reckon this will go through post height, mate. Beautiful. So Dylan Wall enters the tarmac, looking for the second goal for the away team. He stabbed at it. It's a floater, made the top of the square. Some good work there by the, the back six again as they clear the ball through McKenzie on that trusty left foot. 
Unfortunately, it lands on the chest of Blades, who's been busy. Switches the play beautifully into the middle. Played on straight away. Beautiful kick. And a lovely finish there by Cockgrove, who makes them pay. So as a patient build up and being able to hold that ball for a sustainable period inside 450, puts other teams under perceived pressure there. Kingsley? Yeah, it's great great to see Cockrove back. He, he had a knee operation a couple of years back now. The, the amount of work that he put in to get back into this A-grade side is, is actually phenomenal. And, and the rewards are paying off now. So it's great to see him get, getting down and kicking a goal from defence. You'd hate to be a forward. You always hate when a forward, as a forward, when the defender kicks a goal on you've got to go back and wind back onto him but you've got plenty of players that can play off that back six who can attack and, and uh, definitely Lewis Johnson will be releasing him to go forward Rucks are back at it ball comes to ground, some strong tackling there by Matthew Nunn very happy to have him back at the home club tap Ruck there both players uh, pretty honest in the contest so Slater looks to if we replace Robinson in the ruck. Kick out of there by Pittman. Goes inside 50. Strong mark and they're well, playing of Nord Union as they look to switch straight away. Plays on immediately. Finds Jonathan Giannini. String of hand passes out there. Goes towards none. None comes out to our broadcast side. Nice handy mark here. That right half back. Beautiful squaring ball in the 45 to Jed Spence. So can the home team sneak another one just before this final turn finishes? Matt Knight, beautiful contested mark. Asked to play on. Kicks inside, 50 rush kick. Great roving at ground level. Broke that right open. Shenton under pressure. Geez, he's pretty cool, calm and collected. Finds his mate and Lewis Johnson. Johnston switches, bites off plenty. Geez, that's a lovely kick. Plays on immediately. Hand pass received there is Joshua Glenn. Goes on to his left foot. And a magnificent kick there to, I won't even try and pronounce it. Santopoulos. Santopoulos. Difficult name. Some yeah, great work there. By Steer. Gets it on to Haynes. Haynes on to Rahui. So they go out wide. No mark taken there. By Ultimore. And he's stung holding the ball. Very hard to get around Cam Shenton at the best of times. He's at the rock of Gibraltar back there in the Golden Grove Kookaburra's defence. The heavy contest on that far side. Joshua Glenn in a telephone booth goes back to Shenton, back to Glenn. Gives the don't argue Dusty Martin style. Pokes one inside 50, no mark taken. Great work there at ground level. As the Kookaburras queue up. Jesus, almost a mark there to Pascal again. He's hit that contest extremely well. This is it out the back, open goal square, and drifts to the far side for a minor score. Heading into time on, it's Golden Grove 2 3 15. Pain on Nord Union, one straight. So play on Pickley, quickly through Giannini. Giannini finds Wagner. Right half back. Goes in board. Finds none. Had plenty of it early. Giannini looking for a target inside 50 to be a free upfield. Fortuitous because there was no real distinct target inside 50 there for the Falcons. So Giannini taking them on, lacked a little bit of support and fortuitously dumped to the ground in a free upfield. And that looks like Nicholas Kelly will be the recipient. And he'll line up from 25 straight in front for a much needed goal for the Falcons. He might have pulled that to the left there. Looked like a bit of a defender's uh, type of approach on goal. Unfortunately, he's missed that just to the left. Just poked at it, really, didn't he? He did. Didn't kick through it. 
talking to young fellas at home, make sure you put your foot straight through that ball, regardless of how far out you are. Lovely kick out of defence. And finds the chest of Cavallaro. 73 games at the top flight for the Nord Football Club. Seems to be a bit of a theme amongst the two clubs. Plenty of Nord representatives. Connor Dodd marks on that 45. Dangerous hand pass. Gets it back. Mucking around with it somewhat. Goes out wide. Goes back to Glenn. It's the high up and under to a two on three contest. Beautiful mark there. And a courageous mark there by Brad McKenzie. Swings onto that left boot. So McKenzie and Giannini linking up well together. Anthony Giannini has two bounces through the middle. Pokes one over the top. Lovely kick. And that's been their best forward entry so far. And lands on the chest of Harrison Viney. So Viney's looked dangerous without sort of getting off the leash at this stage. He's looked their most dangerous forward. And he'll line up from about 45 straight in front. Viney for a much needed goal. Straight over the goal umpire's head. And he salutes. So some reward for effort late in the quarter for the home team. And on the Sportal scoreboard, it's the Golden Grove Footy Club 2-3 playing 2-1 and a margin of two points. Tom on first term. How are you finding at Kingsley? Oh, it's a great contest. And, and this level, any any mistakes, it just turns over. Bang, bang, goal. It's, uh, you've got to be really on your game here. Some brilliant movement there from Mackenzie and Giannini, two experienced campaigners. And um, if you can get your, your upper echelon players involved with plays like this at any given stage of the game both sides are going to get paid yeah, just opens it right up it does, some terrific skills at the top flight this afternoon, ball held up can either team sneak a late goal in this time on period strong work there by Robinson in the ruck you just feel that pressure meter's gone up a couple of notches No free kick given on the ruck, ball comes out. It's good work by Jonathan Nee at Giannini. No one home at all for the Falcons there. And cleared off that half-back line there was Cotgrove. A goal kicker, I think it was the last goal kicker for the Golden Grove Footy Club. One last surge here from the Falcons. Switches out to Giannini, to his brother. Long kick, high up and under, inside 50, just outside the paint. No mark taken. Plenty of numbers to both teams. Beautiful hand pass over the top. We've got an extra player to link up. Not sure it was the best option. Twist, turn, sells a bit of candy. Need a lucky bounce and rush through for a minor score. And with not very much time left on the sport of scoreboard. It is one point margin, 15 playing 14. I think both coaches would be pretty happy at this stage, Kinsey. Yeah, very, they'll be both very happy. A yeah. few, few little mistakes from both teams, and that's just come down to pressure. Almost a Bianco mark of the week contender there by Shenton. Didn't seem as though he was paid for the mark. Goes inboard to Johnston. Can't pick up the ball. It's a one on four. Somehow shuffles it out the back. Some good work there by Robinson. This is it out to Banwell. Banwell inside 50, looking for big Lenny Pasco. Can't take the mark. Doesn't mind throwing the weight around there, big Pasco. And both teams will be happy as they throw the ball in right on the 50 metre arc here. Time on first team. Looks like we've got an injury coming off here for the Falcons. Looks a little bit uh, annoyed with the situation, the young fella. And that is uh, Scarly, who's late into the a late inclusion into the lineup. Looking at that hamstring, right hamstring at this stage. Mark inside 50, back to the action. It looks like, is that Thatcher? Kane Blades. Kane Blades. So I just see the three, I thought it was the third A, eh? but Kane Blades has been pretty prominent down back, and so he's gone forward down too. Yeah, he uh, come back through injury last year, a bit of a heart condition, so he's uh, good to see he's back up here. He's lost a lot of weight, very fit. Uh, played in the C grade with us last year and kicked 12, I believe, on his way back. So Kane Blades done a, a mountain of work off the field to get himself into this Division One lineup. Looks pretty composed. Difficult pocket for a right footer. Straight over the goal umpire's hat. He's happy. And the away team, the Golden Grove team, nails their third goal. 
three three twenty one on the sport of scoreboard two two fourteen. Always love to hear a good good luck story, and that's certainly the case there with Kane Blades. Oh yeah, he's, he's very fit now. It's credit to himself actually. It's, uh, if everyone took a leaf out of his book, it would be uh, astronomical. So it's uh, it's good to see him up there and getting rewards for effort too. He's uh, always been a very good goal kicker. So. <laughs> So Robinson in the ruck against Kelly comes out the back to Johnston damaging right foot might have one more left in the tank here in this first turn some beautiful roving and they shuffle handball put this one down with Glenn makes you pay every single time coming off a 45 goal season you give him an inch you'll take a mile so it looked like a pretty even first quarter and then the sport of school has gone bang bang boom Goal go 4 3 27 2 2 14. And it's these time on goals I found in the grand final last year as well were quite damaging for Golden Grove. With the red time goals are great if you're kicking them, they kill you if you're not. Yeah, they're worth their weight in gold. So Robinson out of the ruck. It's a good ruck work there by Kelly from the Falcons. Got a high leap. Ball comes to the ground. The Glenn again, should have been done that time, and he is. And there's the siren. So none getting that free kick right on the quarter time siren. But those two red paint, red time goals have proven to be the difference on the sport of scoreboard. Quarter time, it's Golden Grove, 4-3-27 to Painter Norwood Union, 2-2-14. The goal kickers in the first quarter, singles each to Pasco, Potgrove. Blades and Glenn and singles to Nick Nicholas Kelly. Actually, we don't have the secondary goal, the first goal kicker. Harrison Vaughan is kick one. We'll get the other goal kicker as the game progresses. You're listening to Filming Footy. We'll be back with the second quarter action after these key messages.
To the Pain and Mobile for this round one clash between the Pain and Nord Union Falcons and the Golden Grove Kookaburras. For those that are joining us for the first time this afternoon, it's the away team, the Golden Grove Kookaburras 4 3 27, leading Pain and Nord Union at quarter time 2 2 14 on the sport of scoreboard. Plenty of stars uh, getting plenty of the pill in the first quarter, Kingsley Grouse. Yeah, well, as you expect, mate. Um yeah, your normal suspects are Joshua Glenn, Jake Pittman, and Big Louis Johnson. They always get the footy. They know how to use it. Um, and, and they're your main drive. With Cam Shenton sort of directing traffic from the back lines there. Um, it's but interesting, interesting game. I've not playing them have come out firing. Um, you certainly have. And you've uh, plenty of the ball there to Matthew Nunn in his first game back with his home club after 180 odd games with Norwood. And also getting plenty of the, the pill is uh, Bradley McKenzie, obviously 37 games for North Melbourne and a stack of other games here at Norwood. The two Giannini brothers teaching prominently as well. Stage is set for a brilliant second quarter and we could see things either open up somewhat and hopefully Payne and Norwood Union get back some scoreboard pressure. Oh my God. How are you, Richard? Yeah, good. So a bit of grand final redemption here, and just just hope that uh, it is much closer than the 56 point margin in the Division 2 grand final last year. Yeah, I think it'll be a pressure contest most of the day, just, just looking at the two sides, they're very even today. Um, it'll just be the survival of the fittest out there I think, the, the heat, that might be a factor a bit later too. So Robinson and Kelly about to recommence uh, proceedings here in the middle of the ground. The two rucks have had both had good hands on the pill early. Got plenty of uh, quality on ballers to, to dish it out to. So we get underway in the second term. Two newly promoted teams into Division One. As Kelly gets his hands on the ball. Great tackle there. No reward for effort. Quickly kicked out of that centre square there. And on the boot was Templeton. Umpire's found a free kick. And then we'll go to Jed Spence. Left half back. Got a player on this uh, inside of the commentary box side. That's to Dodson. Comes down this side to Viney. Strongly built, built power forward. Kicked a beautiful goal in the first term for the home team. Hasn't been asked to play on as of yet. He, are, he is now. So it goes long down the line. That's where they've fallen down in this first term. Is that kick down the line? Plenty of numbers around there. Kelly, unusual territory for a ruckman. And hence the result on the kick. And the ball trickles out of play. And it'll be kicked back in by Shenton. So big Bruckman's eyes lit up. And uh, force you too much momentum for the big man. What do they say, never handled a ruckman? <laughs> no. Nice kick in. Finds Schwert. It's been busy. Cut the players over the top. Good contest. Strong punch there by Viney towards the boundary line. The players happy to see it go out of play. So okay. And Paynham Nord Union get off to a terrific start by getting the first goal of this second turn. Tapped down there by Robinson. Strong tackling at ground level. And that's either a played on a melee. The ball's going to come back. And it'll be a free kick to Matthew Nunn. He was brilliant in the first turn. As you mentioned earlier in the call, very strong Nord flavour amongst the two teams. Plenty of players know ins and outs of each other and the opposition. Strong punch to ground level. Beautiful work there, Cavallaro. Found some, Pittman on in the middle. Swing onto that left boot. Ignores the short option. Goes looking for Lenny Pascoe. He's not going to make the contest. All held up in the wind and a great mark there by Jonathan Giannini. They switch back in board. Finds Nye, the captain, 
to centre wing. Now it goes inboard as well. Choose one off to Nunn. Nunn's got another switch. Finds Sanzo. Plays on immediately. Could get run down. Gets his kick away nicely. Couple of golden fist punches there. Ball comes back to Swert. Goes to Johnson. Johnson in board to Pittman. Well weighted kick. Just couldn't quite hold his feet. There was Pittman. Can they clear? Sanzo. Switching play goes to Nye. Nye goes out wide to Dodson. So backwards to go forwards. Dodson plays on him. He got the short option on. Found some space there. It's great work there by Catalano. Takes his time sizing up his options. Not much forward of the field. There's just the wall of defenders there for Gold Grove Footy Club. Having an eerie there was Thatcher. Mind you, heavily underweighted in numbers, but some strong forward pressure there from the Falcons and managed to hold the ball. We'll have a, a ball up right on the 50 metre paint. Quickly on the boot. Kelly's at the only one at home, dribbles off his chest, can't quite take the mark. Comes out to Sanzo, found someone on in the middle. Couldn't quite take it, it was Wagner. Pressure's been lifted here by the Falcons. Chip on goal by Sparkle. And he's added the spark that they needed. So Sparkle, beautiful snap on the slipper. And he's drawn the first part of this second term on the Sportal scoreboard. It's the Golden Grove Cookabars 4 3 27. And a much needed goal there to paint a Northern Union 3 2 20. Margin of seven points, about seven minutes into this second term. Well, the Paynham have come out and they've lifted the tempo again. You can see that's evident down there in the forward line. A lot of forward line pressure from Paynham this quarter. It's got Golden Grove on the hop a bit down there. Definitely lifted their forward pressure. Hopefully they'll sharpen up some of their execution inside 50 because they'll make them pay. Robinson up against Kelly. Both players couldn't quite get an advantage to they're on ballers. Well, hit up in the middle. Jeez, there's plenty of grunt in that uh, engine room from both teams. Tap again by Robinson. Goni goes as far there as Nye. Getting plenty of it in the second turn. No mark taken. Great contest there by Hodges. Ball comes out. Quick snap again. Just drifted late. And that was Matthew Nunn. Who's been absolutely sensational for his junior club after coming back from Nord. So ascendancy with the home side at the minute. Can they do some damage on the Sportal scoreboard? They'll quickly play on from the kick in. Great mark at the back. Not paid. Very unlucky not to get that mark, played on that far side there by Templeton. Anyway, the ball's inside 50 and Hodges takes a really strong mark, made to earn it. There's talk of a 25, nothing doing. So Templeton with plenty of fanfare on the boundary line on that far side to take a magnificent kick to slot this one through, given the level of difficulty on this kick. Deliberate approach. Plenty of confidence, plenty of confidence, just to the narrow side, for Templeton. Ah, oh, sorry for Hodges. And registers a minor score. So six points the difference on the sport of school, actually five points the difference, so we're under a goal. And you need to make, make hay while the sun shines here, Kings of Grass. Yeah, they're... Uh... They're wasting a few opportunities, man. They might come back to bottom, them, but their pressure, as I said before, has lifted tremendously. Some strong tackling there by Osborne, and he's rewarded with the free kick. Really enjoy watching this uh, level of football because they're really quick on the, the holding the ball. There's no 720s and, and players getting away with it at the last second. Comes out to that full back position in Shenton. Reliable kick, and this is the case again. So Shenton goes to Borg. Borg comes out towards Cockgrove. Cockgrove goes down long down the line. Slater. Slater. Big man, Man Mountain. Oh, 
Kicks inside 50. Johnson can't quite take the Bianco mark of the week. Ball held up, and we'll have the ball up about 40 from home here for the Kookaburras. And we'd have to say much need of a goal here just to yeah, stabilise the game. To sell it down a bit. So Osborne comes out of that contest. We talked about the 7.20. Snap on goal and well punched through there. To Saulus, beautiful punch. Went under the pump. So short options on. Finds none. Using all of his wealth of experience. Goes to Mac Haynes. Left back pocket. Not much on. A little bit stagnant. So Tasola switches play. Ooh, a little bit too much heat on that ball. Got Joshua Glenn on. Great diving attempt there by Giannini. I think it was at ground level. Jeez, he's a hard-earned pill. I think that's Pittman. Gets it on the boot. Can't quite take the mark. And there's Anthony Giannini. Jeez, he's playing some sort of game. Along with none. For the home side. Ball still in. Comes to Glenn. This is dangerous. Hits the hot spot. Goes with the one hand with Slater. Couldn't take the mark. Ball picked up again by Slater. Can't get out of that tackle. Ball trickles through his legs there. Comes towards Lewis Johnson. Playing for a bit of a free kick there. Jeez, a lot of heat on that one. There's umpires found a free kick. And the free kick will go to Ultimore. Ultimore. Comes out to Jed Spence on our broadcast side. Hodges couldn't pick up the worm burn. A magnificent contest. Ball comes out to Spence. Goes inside 50. Had a further option on two players were free, including Viney. Unfortunately, Spence under the heat of the pressure. Shows the one-on-one -on -one instead of the uh, two free players. So both sides, plenty of pressure on, but just not much scoreboard pressure or reward for effort at the moment. Yeah, that's coming down to the pressure. There's you know, a lot of pressure on the kick. We're missing targets. Pain and missing targets. Yeah, we just have to tidy everything up a bit. Some great work goes to Nunn. Nunn whacks it on the left boot. Puts the snapper in there. Ball comes out towards Johnson, double grabs at it. Should receive a free kick. It's holding the ball. Some beautiful tackling. And Matt and I, the captain, need a captain's goal. And caught Lewis Johnson on the cold day of night. And he set himself up for a goal. Can they get this captain's goal? He'll have to kick from about 45-9. 171 games for the club, the club captain. Loads up, goes left, and stays left. Unfortunately, it's a minor score. So five points to margin again on the Sportal scoreboard, favouring the Kookaburras. Trying to dodge with the kick-out duties. It's a magnificent kick from full back. Johnson up high with the Bianco attempt. Can't quite take the mark. Well held up there in the end by Osborne. It's a real arm wrestle in the second term. Neither side either able to get on top in any way, shape or form. Ball comes to ground, some heavy hitting again. Comes out to Giannini, goes to his brother. Wax it on the left boot. Tumble kick inside 50, well read. Plenty of defenders there for Golden Grove. Pittman comes out the back. Jeez, he is just about cooked there. Can't quite, just got his kick away. Glenn breaks the tackle. Could have been done for holding the ball. Managed to get rid of it with enough time. Goes to Banwell. Clean bowl through the contest. And the ability to recover was good from McKenzie. Great attempt there by Nye. Couldn't take the mark. And the ball trickles off the hands of Altamore. And we'll have another throw in. About 50 from home. Make that about 40 from home for the Falcons. Next goal is going to be pretty pivotal here. Yeah, it'll be very interesting. 
a little big arm wrestle at the moment. So ball thrown in. Tough tussle with the two rucks. Ball comes out there to Wagner. Needs a goal. Swinging. Needs a lucky bounce. Trickles off hands for a minor score. So four points for Marginal. Sport of scoreboard. You'd have to say we're definitely about 15 minutes down. So Shenton kicks in, looking for Slater. Can't take them. Oh, it's a juggle attempt from both players. Slater gets it onto Johnston. Weaves, one, two. His hand pass is deflected there by Dodson. High tackle. Umpire sees it. Jed Spence rewarded. Got one on the 45. Not much long options available at his disposal. That wall has been built pretty well. By the Kookaburra's defence, Viney up high. And Cameron Shenton, smart football, just pushes and puddles that ball out of defence over the boundary line. So I'd have to say that the Falcons have probably had 60% of this second quarter inside their forward half. Ball comes out towards Robinson. Great contest by both teams there. Nice work there by McKenzie. Been the architect at half back. Ball comes out in that tackle. Goes out towards none. None with a high ball inside 50. Need a bit of luck here. Oh, and ball trickles through for another minor score. So three points to margin on the Sportal scoreboard. Can't seem to get it past centre, centre half back to the uh, Golden Grove. No, they can't. And uh, umpire's found a free kick for chopping the arms. Umpire won't let the uh, let that play on, unfortunately. It's a bit stagnant here for Golden Grove. Wouldn't have said that. In the first quarter, lands over the top there to Banwell. Banwell goes to Johnston. Johnston at left half back. Got a thumping kick. Beautiful kick again. Finds Pittman in the middle. The industrious Pittman comes out wide to Shenton. Shenton plays it on. Nice hand pass over the top to Dobie. Dobie goes inside 50. Some good body work. May have been an illegal shepherd. No, it's a free kick. And that's Cavallaro. So Cavallaro started the second quarter in the middle. 73 games for the Norwood Footy Club. Some really bright wheels, hasn't he? He's got some good looking wheels on him. So this could be a bit of a circuit breaker here from Cavallaro. Reasonably straight in front, not quite the 45 degree angle. Probably on the 35. He'll kick from about 38 metres. Deliberate approach. Pulled it right. And he's, put, he's got enough on it. And he slapped the wrist in uh, Damien Lillard form. Bit of an ice man. So well done there, Cavallaro. Much needed goal there for Golden Grove. And a circuit breaker, hopefully, for the game because we had a massive arm wrestle here for about the first 20 minutes of this second turn. And on the sport of school ball, it's Golden Grove 5 4 34. Playing of Norwood Union 3 7 25. It's very frustrating for the Paynham coach of peppering the goals down there and three points and Golden Grove head down there and just kick one, one entry, one goal. It's a bit disappointing. Yeah, Jeremy Cheney would be pulling his hair out at the moment with that inaccuracy because it's Probably cost them at the moment. Back to the middle. Some great candy sold there. Beautiful work by the uh, Golden Grove back six as they link up with their midfielders. Deliberate approach inside Ford 50. Ball comes to ground. Pascoe fighting hard at ground level, the big man. Done well at ground level there, below his knees. And will have a ball up about 40 from home. So going towards red time again. This is where they snuck two goals late in the first home. Pittman, professional free kick. 
played Jonathan Giannini really well there because he knew he wasn't going to quite get there. And uh, as good footballers do, they can draw free kicks. And he's certainly done that there, Jake Pittman. Yeah, he works hard all day. Whenever you uh, come up against uh, Pitty, he'll just run and run and run all day. So. Might only won't be one pace, but it just, he just goes and goes. Oh, he, he doesn't stop. He's just a credit to himself. That's how, why he's won so many best and fairest. So the five-time best and fairest, Diff 2 medalist from 2023, lines up. Left footer, 35 out. Can he make him pay? He has. So a handy little buffer as we head towards the half-time break on the Sportal scoreboard. It's Golden Grove 6 4 40 to the Pan of Northern Union 3 7 25. It's a 15 point margin, a very handy buffer at this stage of the game. Yeah, it's a couple of quick goals, we've settled them down a little bit now. We'll see how Paynham reacts to this one. And that's a match high lead, only 15 points. Just shows how much this, uh, how tight this game has been. You look on the sport of scoreboard, that's 10 scoring shots apiece. Mind you, we've had probably, uh, out of those 11 behinds, at least half of them have been rushed. So Robinson, back into the ruck, is up against Wagner, ball comes to ground. Another trickle, ball inside 50. Pasco good at ground level. Jeez, he almost took his head off there, Pasco. Umpire's found a free kick, and deservedly so, too high. So can the Falcons sneak one late in the second term? They got the switch on to Dodson. Not sure they'll prepare to take that risk. So it's Catalano goes out to the far side. Goes looking in the direction there of Rahui. And the ball's out of play. So Wagner, Robinson. Huge man, Robinson. Kick there inside 50. Some beautiful work there by Joshua Glenn. Jeez, he's good at ground level. Hits the hot spot. Plenty of twirl on that ball. Got the 720. Comes back towards Pasco. Big man can't pick up the ball. Some work work there by Giannini in the one two. Could come back with a bit of interest. Caballero, will he get it back? Goes towards Shenton, mobbed as he enters the 54 eight. So they've turned it over. Can they get a late goal here, the Falcons? Smart little kick goes in the direction of Hodges. Can't quite take the mark. Falls off of his knee. Hodges does well enough to pick it back up. Lines up for a goal is Kelly, the big man. Great goal. An excellent goal there by Nicholas Kelly. And well done to Hodges for his perseverance. And a much needed goal. And that looks much better for the home team on the Sportal scoreboard. Golden Grove, 6-4-40. And the Pain of Norwood Union, 4 7 31. Nine point margin time on second term. Yeah, it was, that was a great reward for effort there. They kept at it, paying them. Um, hard tackles, pushed them through, and they actually went down there and scored the goal that they needed. A great reward there. So Tommy Wagner up against the big man and Robinson. Robinson gets the tap down to Glenn. Got peas and carrots in the middle. Good work there by the Falcons. Defence held up well. Good tackling there by Spence. Our boss says my ball. Interesting ruck contest. Both players didn't even know they were going up against each other. That's the advantage of the third man up at this level. Tap. Quick kick out of the contest from Cavallaro, unfortunately. Lands on the chest there of Tosoulis. So Tosoulis playing good game in that last line of defence. Switches out to Catalano. Catalano goes even wider.
Had none on the 45. Decides to go against him. Dangerous kick. Oh, Wagner looking for the 25 or the 50. Umpire agrees. Pittman sort of caught there. Plays on quickly. Anthony Giannini goes inside 50. No mark taken. Jeez, he wore him like a glove there. Umpire's found another free kick. So free kick going to Rahui. Played a tremendous grand final game, Rahui. Looks a bit too far out to score. Had an option on at the top of the paint, ignored that. And now we'll probably have to go back and try and slot this one through. She's kind of done, just wore him like a glove there. Eh? So Rahui. Kicks from 48, drifts to the right, stays right, and that's actually out of bounds on the full. Not troubling the sport of scoreboard. Word on short, ignores that target. Plays on in the direction of Pittman. Little man gets mobbed in the contest. Coming out towards Rahui. Can he redeem himself from that previous kick? Beautiful kick inside 50. Kelly plays on immediately. Goes for his second in a row and he's found it. Beautiful kick by Rahui. All the footy smarts you require at this level. And Kelly could have held up, but goes. Stuff it, I'm going to have a crack here. And he played on immediately with plenty of confidence and bang. So two in a row there to Nicholas Kelly and some smart work there by Rahui. And all of a sudden, the sport will scoreboard back to three points. Time on, second term. Great decision by Rahui to centre that ball then. Saw there was a two, two on to three situation. And uh, hit the target. Big fella kicked the goal. Quite simple when you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> they say it's a numbers game. And Coach Jeremy Cheney absolutely delighted with the efforts there of Rahui. Ball comes back to the middle. Glenn streams out of the centre. Can't fight, find a target. Cavallaro at ground level. Got those flashy orange boots. Goes to Pittman. Wouldn't want it in anyone else's hands. Sizes up his options. Holds the ball. There shouldn't be much time left. Goes wider, goes in the direction of Dylan Wall, can't take the mark. Brilliant work there by the Pain of Nord defence. Held up very well there. Just got the touch in there, didn't he? Just to put Wally off. Comes to the ground level. Wouldn't want to give away another late goal here like the first term. Up by Cool's play on. Obviously heard a touch ball. Strong contest there by Nunn in Cockgrove. Wagner tries to take it out of the ruck. And maybe five years ago that would have been holding the ball. Taking that, that out of the ruck. That out of the yeah. Ruck Good work there by Wagner. He's injected some enthusiasm into the ruck contest. The big left foot there of Connor Dodd goes inside forward 50. Cookabara's looking for a late one. And the Falcons defence has just turned one over. Had a real crucial phase of this second quarter. So Slater turns his back on the play, such as the confidence of the young man. Got to make sure of it now. So Slater, late in the second term, can he give the Kookaburras the ascendancy heading into half time? Awkward approach. I'll tell you what, he's nailed it though. And a timely goal by Slater for the Kookaburras. So the Kookaburras 7-4, 46 to the Pain of Norwood Union Falcons 5-7, 37. That's three goals in time on in the two quarters so far. Yeah, it's just such a great pressure game. Both teams have rewarded each other by going down and scoring when they have the opportunities. It's just that contest in the middle that's, that's enthralling actually. It's yeah. A lot of superstars around that pill. Both engine rooms working an absolute treat. So Robinson up against Wagner. 
So that's Kelly back on the run. Ball drops the ground, comes out to Glenn. Weaves on that left foot, dangerous kick. No mark taken. Oh, what a magnificent tackle. That's a baked bean tackle of the week. Absolutely superb. So Matthew Nunn. Fantastic work ethic. The switch on wide out here to Dodson. Goes the option further afield. Look wide, look wide. So Wagner. Tommy, look wide. True centre wing on the left foot. Goes long, heading for Hodges. Siren beats all comers. And on the sport of scoreboard at half time, it's the Golden Grove Cookabar 7 4 46. Part of Nord Union 5 7 37. It's an 11 point ball game at half time. Go to the goal kickers in no particular order for the Gold Grove Footy Club. Glenn and Pittman with one each. So all single goal scorers all over the field for the Cookabars. Cavallaro one, Cockgrove, Blades, Slater and Pasco one each. Nicholas Kelly with two second quarter goals. He was superb whilst resting in the ruck. And singles also to Sparkle and Viney. We've also got another goal kicker to try and figure out who that is at half time for the Falcons, I think both coaches will be very delighted with their charges heading into the halftime break there, King was in Grouse. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it's a great, great game. Uh, the pressure from both both teams is fantastic. And just unfortunately for Payne, they didn't finish off their hard work there. A lot of ball inside their forward 50, didn't they? They, they had a lot of ball inside the forward 50. I reckon they would have had 70% of the play that quarter. And unfortunately, Golden Grove were able to get a little bit of the play and uh, finish off uh, a lot better. Uh, Unfortunately, the Falcons, it was a three-goal five quarter. just showed that they uh, had plenty of the ball inside 50, just not quite making a fist of it uh, on the scoreboard, but that's fine. They've got a second half to play out. We'll be back with plenty of action in the second half of these two teams, recently promoted for the 2024 Adelaide Footy League Division 1. We'll be back after these key messages.
Welcome back to the second half action here of this Adelaide Footy League Division 1 clash between Payne of Nord Union and the Golden Grove Footy Club. Golden Grove 7-4, 46 in front of Payne of Nord Union 5-7-37. It's a lead of nine points. Halftime break over and done with. Big thank you to Farmers Leap, Roll the Dice Racing, Born to Build and Bianco, as well as Dartfish and Archies for all of their sponsorship. Back to the action. Kelly up against Robinson. Robinson, big centre clearance from the big man. Straight down the throat there. Of Templeton, can't take the mark. Ball comes to ground. Just some strong tackling there. Umpire says, my ball. Welcome back to the second half, Kingsley Grouse. Thanks for having me, mate. Yeah, it, uh, hopefully the uh, first or uh, second half is as good as the first. Just had a lovely little winner in the halftime break, winning the uh, the Falcons meat tray. Yeah, that was fantastic meat tray. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, if you can, get down to your local footy clubs during the year and help them support them. Spend some money in the bar, buy some raffle tickets, support the local guys. It certainly is. It's the uh, heartbeat of our footy clubs. Quick kick inside 50. No one at home at the moment for the Kookaburras. Roaring through that tackle, quick kick out of the line there, and it's out of bounds on the full off the boot of Slater, who kicked the last goal of the second half. Bit of a rush of blood there, should have been Campbell out there. Should have, yes, yeah. could have, should have, and didn't. <laughs> so the Falcons deep in their last line of defence. Oh. oh, there's a little Bianco contender there by Slater for the mark of the week. Slater drives it back inside Ford 50. Going to be a bit too far gone for Pasco. Couldn't quite get to the contest. Under an enormous amount of duress there, the Falcons' defence. Can't quite get their hands on the pill. Quick kick off the ground. Fortuitous leader to Kelly. This quick turnover goes out towards Hodges on the far side. Near, right near our Sportal scoreboard. Hodges has Wagner deep. Won't go in that direction. Free kick from the umpire, pushing the back. As he played advantage, he's not really looking there. Should have been an advantage to Wagner, who was walking into an open goal, and the umpire's called it back. Unfortunately for Ahui, the ball has been brought back to him and turns his back on the play. I'm going to think Rahui's probably a bit too far out to score, although he'll kick from about 45. He seems confident enough. Staggered approach. Hop, skip, jump. <coughs> Rahui from 40. Goes across the face of goal. Off hands towards Hodges. Can't quite keep it in. And escort over the boundary line there by Swert. Haven't seen much action in this pocket throughout this afternoon. Welcome all new viewers who have joined us for the second half action here. Both uh, two newly promoted teams from Division 2 to Division 1. We've painted Nord Union looking for some sort of redemption after the 50, 56 point loss in last year's grand final at the hands of the Golden Grove Kookaburras. Both coaches would be pretty happy with the output of their team in the first half. That ball is going nowhere. Robinson gets his hands on the ball. Goes towards Pittman. Pittman kicks out towards ball. Beautiful mark. Great contested mark. Up against the experience, Jonathan Giannini. He's turned the ball over. Kelly kicked two goals in the second term. Goes to Viney. Viney from the paint. Sprays to the side, could have been a free kick for frontal contact and the umpire's seen it that way. So Tommy Wagner, we found out at the halftime break, was the first goal kicker for the Falcons this afternoon. And gets a free kick for his second, on, second goal this afternoon. Experienced campaigner. 38 games here at Nord on the left peg. Beautiful looking snapper. And a delightful kick there from Tommy Wagner. Opens proceedings in this second half. 
And the scoreboards are lit again on the Sportal scoreboard. It's 7 4 42, uh, 46 there for the Golden Grove Footy Club. 6 7 43. So a four point margin, three point margin on the Sportal scoreboard. I think this one's going to go right down to the wire there. It's Exhilarating game so far, and the highest uh, margin so far has been the 15 points, which we saw late in uh, the term. Once again, just an error of the switch of play into the middle, turnover and goal. I'll make you pay in Division 1, that's for sure. So Robinson up against Hodges, good tap there by Robinson. Steam train in his, uh, in his wake. Perfectly picked up there by Nunn. Had a fantastic first half. Pokes the ball out towards Sparkle. And Sparkle did spark them early in that second turn. Uncontested mark in the end there to Shenton. Who loves that situation. Good kick there to Dodd. Dodd goes out wider. Got one on the 45. It finds Bamwell in short. Bamwell's got Pittman. So heading back to the corridor. Switches out even further to Johnston and a one on three. Uses all his wealth of experience. Goes to Shenton. They love that combination. Goes back to Robinson. Sorry, Ingram. Ingram's turned it over. Gets the ball over to Spence. Spence on the left peg. I've got one on. Clever kick from Rahui. So fantastic start here by the home team. Yeah, unusual turnover that one. Kicked it straight to the paint player. Bit of difference in the uh, Guernsey colour, I think, but anyway. So for two and two minutes for the home team. Viney happy with it. What a magnificent start to the second half for the home team. It's the pain of Nord Union hit the lead for the first time. 7-7, 49 to 7-4-46. So we played 120 minutes of the grand final. You'd have to say about 65 of this game. And finally they've got up in front on the scoreboard. Just another costly turnover. Created an opportunity and goal. Viney looking very dangerous in his forward 50. Perceived pressure is a big thing and it seems to have uh, eaten into the confidence of the Kookaburras. Anyway, back to the action. Good work there by Banwell. Goes out wide looking for Slater. Picks it up well. Gets a slipper on it just in the right amount of time. Heads towards Pasco. No mark taken. Plenty of heat on that contest on the far side. And the ball trickles out of play. Game very evenly poised. Premiership quarter coming up here. Wagner. It's the ball down. Good work there by Spence on that far side. Goes in the direction of Viney. Handy little Bianco mark of the week contender. Loves pushing up the ground. Great work ethic. Switches the play. It goes backwards towards Sanzo. Sanzo drifts it over the top. This is where the Giannini's come into play. None. Damaging kick. He's got a couple outside of that. Inside the 50. Can't find him. Ball comes to ground. Mopping up well there was Dodd. Goes to Johnston. Great kick in the end, but lands fortuitously on the chest of Cavallaro. Cavallaro goes out to Shenton. Plenty of method out of defence there for the Kookaburras. Play just entered the arena. That was a smart kick there. Xanthopoulos. The Xanthopoulos. Good Greek pedigree. Thansopoulos goes long down the line, searching ball. Goes in the direction of Pasco, can't make it to him. 
Panthopoulos gets it on the boot. It's a one on two. Good contest at ground level. Pasco comes through, throws his weight around. Might have given the free kick for over the shoulder and he has. So Jed Spence been busy in this third turn. Switches the ball out to McKenzie. The architect in the back six. Could go back to him in the pink boots. And he will. Doesn't find his chest, McKenzie, but plenty of skill. Goes onto that trusty left boot. Anthony Giannini on that far side. So all the big guns coming to the fray here for the home team. They go inside 50 again. Goes in the direction of Hodges. Won't make that target. A quick turn of events there. Almost a falcon to Cockgrove. There's enough space for Cockgrove to recover. A long searching ball down the line. No mark taken. Good work there by Jonathan Giannini mopping up to McKenzie. McKenzie drills a ball towards that wing. No mark taken. Plenty of heat on this contest again. And plenty of candy being sold. Another searching ball towards Pasco's caught behind in the contest. Tosaurus has played him well after the big man opens proceedings here, big Lenny Pasco. Little battle of defences early doors in this third term here. Yeah, yeah I think so, yeah. It's, uh, like I said earlier, it's just going to be a battle to the end. Plenty of holding on to the contest by both players. Umpire says play on. Well called by the umpire. Dodson, happy to see it out as he walks the ball over the boundary line. Looks like the first genuine opportunity that the Kookaburras have had in this third team as most of the play's been in their defensive 50. Oh, smart work in the contest. I'm not sure if he snuck it in. And Slater, being dangerous inside Ford 50, using all of his strength and just to the narrow side for a minor score. So that's the first score for the second half for Golden Grove, but it's still the home team up by two points on the Sportle scoreboard. 49 playing 47. Smart chip finds to Saulus. Pretty stagnant as he looks up the field. Has Jed Spence on his short, ignores that target. Goes longer down the line looking for Wagner and Co. Wagner's received a free kick. Throwing with confidence is Wagner. He goes backwards to McKenzie. Kenzie switches the play to Tosaurus. Takes his time getting rid of it. Puts himself under some unnecessary oh, pressure. Great, great. Turn it over. Pittman. Dangerous. Dangerous. Goes over the top. He's played on. Goes to Big Lenny Pasco, who drills it straight through for a goal. So the Kookaburras fight back on the scoreboard. And kick their first goal for the second half. And the sport of scoreboard. It is 8-5-53. The home side, just four points adrift. 7-7-49. Seven, seven, it's just that uh, continual work rate from Pity there. Always working hard to try and get the ball. Um, just great defensive pressure, which needs a few mates at this stage of the game, I think. Well, from Premiership quarters, he's been pretty even, Stephen, so far. Yeah. The home side with two goals in this second half. And... The Kookaburra is getting one that they desperately needed as well. Back to the middle. Good tap there by Robinson. And taken high there was Pittman. This is off to Johnston. Not his best kick this afternoon. Tumble kick inside 50. Well picked up by Big Lenny Pasco. Wheels around like a Mack truck. Hits to the hot spot. No one there. Comes out towards Jonathan Giannini. Plenty of uh, skill amongst them. And some good work there to Catalano. Catalano down the line to a one on two. And ball punched over the line there by Thatcher. Game, you just feel just starting to open up, which is what the, uh, the fans are after. The 
tap there by Kelly. Looks That's like it's out. kicked on the fall. Joshua Glenn, probably for the first time in his career, has had to go and collect the ball from the back fence. <laughs> so Glenn, very busy in the first quarter, sort of drifted a little bit later in that second turn. Not his best kick, wasn't a lot on for him. It's stacked on the Golden Grove foot, the forward line of the stage. It certainly is. So Kelly and Slater. Pretty famous surfer with Kelly Slater. So Slater wins out. Pulled it wide, goes into the pocket. Good mark there in the end, it's been paid. Pretty lucky because it looked like there was a fist from that defender. Pasco claims it. He fired up the big man, that's what we love to see. Tough kick on goal. Second for the turn, beautiful oh, snapper. So Pasco registers his third and uh, his second in about three minutes. And again, the scoreboard just drifts out a little bit in the favour. A little handy buffer there for the Kookaburras. 9-5. 59 to 7749. Again out to a 10-point margin. It's the way the whole game's gone, hasn't it, today? It's, uh, Real couple, ebbs and flows. Yeah, that is, yeah. A couple of goals each side. I think they're going to drift away. The other team gets a couple back. It's really If great this game. is the way that the script is going, you suspect that the pain of Nord Jr. will kick the next goal here, Kingsley? Yeah, that's right. I I might have a blood rule here. Huh? Back to the action. So Slater and Kelly. The tap by Slater. And we'll have a secondary bounce. The strong work in the middle there by Spence. Spence looks as though he's gone to Pittman. Taken high there. Just kind of dodged. Nothing in it from the umpire. So important ball to be won. Here's a kick to the top of the 50. Pittman just improvising where he can. Goes on the opposite peg. Goes to Lewis Johnson who has got the kick here to go the distance. Don't reckon he'll be passing this one. So the man on the mark's about 51. Johnson with a thumping kick. Kicks from just inside the square. It's got the distance, but fades to the right for a minor score. And on the sport of score, but it's 9 6 60 to 7 7 49. 11 point margin midway through this third term. Falcons had one on short there, but decided to go against him. It goes to a one on three. Probably bitten off more than he should have. It's interesting, I would have gone none on the shorter option there. Instead, he went to the one on three. And that can be to the detriment of the opposition when that takes place. So Slater against Kelly. Goes to Pittman. Getting plenty of attention from Jed, Jed Spence. Little mismatch there with Old Tamore and Johnson just in the background of this contest. Slater gone. Great tackle. I think he probably didn't need to get involved there. It goes to Old Tamore. Old Tamore just goes that uh, little 45 kick there. Love to chip it around the Falcons. Giannini in short. Ends up going the long ball on the, down the line. And this has been their hardest one to compete with. But Kelly takes a very timely mark. Big man's game. played well. He's had a great game. Well, he's not his best kick though. Turns it over to Pittman. Very damaging with his left peg. 
got Johnson on short. Right on the heart of the Painter Mobile. Decides against it. He's got Glenn out wide here. Clever kick. Finds Big Robinson. Oh, great. Oh, great lead. Lenny Pascoe does the rest. Looked like an awkward, awkward kick off the, the boot of Robinson, but just very well rated. And Lenny Pascoe did the rest and ended up marking on his chest relatively uncontested in the end. It's a great great position of the ball, especially for a leading forward. Knew where I was going to go. See if he can finish it off. So big Lenny Pascoe lining up for his third for the turn. Got those hungry eyes. Oh, and unfortunately he's kicked straight through the middle of the points. A little bit of a letdown after some excellent work this quarter, Pasco. Sportal scoreboard, 9-7-61. Two goal margin here as we head towards time on in this third turn. Giannini goes long down the line. Can't find steer. Coming back inside 50 with a bit of interest in the direction of Lenny Pascoe. Being dangerous. Ball comes to the ground. Through the hands of Banwell. Goes out towards Borg. Taken heavily. On that far side. Jeez, that's an absolutely crunching tackle. Very hard tackle there. I might have found a 50 here. Mr. Solis hands it off. Beautiful kick. Finds the chest of Tommy Wagner. Too far out to score. Kicks to Dodson. Dodson looks like he's put a bit too much uh, on that. Could come out. Oh. Put a bit too much mustard on that kick. But not a bad result in the end. But 22 minutes down, third turn. So the Falcons will be desperate for a goal here. Very desperate for a goal. So we're heading towards the time on period for the third term. Tap over the back into the hot spot. Beautiful little trip. And what a goal. Inspiring snap out of that contest. Made something out of nothing. Looks like Matty Nunn. So Matty Nunn has had a stack of the pill. It just pops up at the pivotal moment to, to put one on the scoreboard for his team. And it's back out to a six point margin. So six points. This will go down to the wire this afternoon. Clever craft there for Matty Nunn. Oh, that was, that was just great positioning. And you'd expect that from an experienced yeah, Santa Fe player. He knows where to be. And that's what you want him here for, to kick those goals. So Robinson's and Hodges. Robinson with too much height in the ruck. Hodges at ground level, recovers well, goes to Dodson. Dodson kicks out towards our broadcast full for, uh, half forward line. Up by has found a free kick, haven't they? No, no. Throwing it in. Thought there could have been a free kick to Cristangi. Nothing doing. So Hodges and Robinson. Good tap there by Hodges. Goes towards Dodson. Come back there to Sanzo. Sanzo pumps it inside 50. Cameron Shenton says that. I'll mop this one up, lads. Just seem to be setting up behind the ball a bit better now, Painter. Get that outlet handle. Been a real battle of defences in this third turn. So Shenton asks the play on and he does. Heads in the direction of Robinson. Punch there by Dodson, but not in the direction of his footy club. Giannini's hardly met and he's... Uh, 
put under the grill. Not much prior opportunity. However, Joshua England says, I don't mind because I'm going to play on, and he does. Right into the middle of the oval. Goes to Cavallaro. Cavallaro switches. Heads out wide to Dylan Wall. Wall, beautiful chip inside 50. And Banwell could have played on, but says, I'll just hold it up here, lads, and we'll have a shot on goal. A very deliberate, strong methodology there from the Kookaburras. And when they're up and about, they'll slice and dice. So Jed Banwell lining up for his first. He's taken the Dennis Lilly run up. Almost lost him mid... Uh, Banwell sprints in, drifts late, will stay left. So the Sportal scoreboard 9 8 62 2 8 7 55. Time on third term. Next goal is very crucial for both teams. Go to the pocket to Jonathan Giannini. Giannini goes to Rudy Casulis. Tallest battle world back there. That's why it gives him what seems to be an eternity. Goes in the direction of Hodges. Can't take the mark. That's a great spot. It's a great spot to be. Good work there to Spence. She's a worm burner. Comes back to Hodges. Could have been a free kick. Free kick will come back to Matty Nunn. Gives to Hodges. I just pumps inside 50. Ball comes to ground. Seemingly under control, but now under pressures the Kookaburra's defence. Goes towards Shenton, who literally walks the ball over the line. They've stepped up the pressure a bit more now, Payne. Yeah, their forward half pressure has been superb, particularly in the, the second and third quarters. Tap the ground, goes towards uh, Jed Spence. Had a magnificent third turn. Oh, Ben Shenton. And a great mark there by Shenton. Geez, he does a weight of work back there. Oh, tough ball. Kick towards Schwert. And he's held up in that contest. Desperate stakes there. Smart football by Jed Spence. Three or four up in the ruck. Could have come off the foot in the end there by Christangi, but nothing doing from the umpire. Full trickles out the back. Gets his hand pass just in time. So Lenny Pasco on the one-on-one. -on -one. Eyes in the sun. Big Lenny Pasco turns on the five-cent piece. Gives it to the Cav. Cav played on. He played on. And the umpire agrees. Or is he going to call it back? I think he called play on the umpire. Umpire did not call play on. His arms didn't go up, but he scored full time. And he takes the ball off him. An interesting end to the third term, the Premiership quarter. It's the away team, the Golden Grove Footy Club, 9 8 62. With a seven point margin over the Pain of Norwood Union Falcons, 8 7 56. Make that 55. Goal kickers, Lenny Pascoe with three, including two in this third term. Singles also to Slater, Blades, Cotgrove, Cavallaro, Pittman, and Glenn. Two each to the home team to Harrison Viney and Nicholas Kelly. And singles to Sparkle and Matthew Nunn and Tommy Wagner. We've got a huge final term coming up. Don't miss all the action between these two recently promoted teams. We'll bring back all the action after these key messages.
play for the entire quarter. Apologies if we've had any technical difficulties in this fourth term, particularly with our audio. Hopefully we've got that sorted out, but it is the Falcons up by a goal on the Sportal scoreboard. 68. Play 62. Inside 50 again. Excellent mark there. Should have been given a 25 or a 50. He's got the 25. Big Stephen Osborne. So Osborne elevated to left half back after the 25 metre penalty. Not a lot upfield, not much movement. He punched the ground, goes towards Glenn. It's on that trusty left boot. Kicks in 550, looking for Cavallaro. Plays well above his height, Cavallaro. Smart work there by uh, Giannini. Jonathan Variety. Work there again at Grand Lundville by Ultimore. String of hand passes to Hodges. They have one again, Rahui. Burst of speed there from Rahui. Not his best kick. Lands on the chest of Viney though. Wasn't his best kick, but it was punishing. Straight to the hot spot to Viney. Will line up for his fourth. Just a lot more run from Paynham at the moment. In front, up and about. They certainly are up and about. So Viney has the game in his hands at the moment. Deliberate approach, straight in front. And goes bada bing, bada boom. So Viney kicks his fourth, and this is the highest margin for the home team. And it's a two-goal buffer and a very handy one up that there, Kingsley Grouse. Oh, it's, uh, they're just playing a bit more, bit better footy at the moment. As I said before, the pressure's up. And at the moment, they can't handle the pressure back there, Golden Grove. Brilliant start to this final turn by the home team. Falcons in front by two goals after a seven point margin at three quarter time. Strong tackling there by Bamwell. So Hodges up against Robinson. Cavallaro tries to break away and he's been oh. done for holding the ball. And a real feature of the Falcons this afternoon has been their pressure and they've continually built that throughout the day. Good work by Spence, being one of the better players for the home team. Nice chiselling mark there from Wagner. Kicks right into that hot spot again in the direction of Kelly. Takes out a couple with the collateral damage and under pressure again and holding the ball. Good work there by Anthony Giannini. Beautiful, and that's going to be 50. And that might actually be another card. That was beautiful work. So, Tamori! And all tomorrow puts it straight through the high diddle and we're out to a three goal margin but Anthony Giannini what an absolutely terrific kick and all tomorrow does the damage you got Rahui and all tomorrow in that four line creating a bit of havoc at the moment seem to have a little bit more pace in their legs and the Golden Grove Kookaburra is looking a bit sluggish coming out of defence. Back to the middle. Robinson up against Hodges. Just clearing centre clearance after centre clearance through Spence on this occasion. Goes in the direction of Wagner. He's pulled towards the, the boundary line. Big thank you again to Classic Catchers for bringing this game to you.
Big also thanks to Jamie Graves on camera and then Kingsley Grouse for joining myself, Matt Gale, this afternoon here at the Plain of Mogul. It's Ben's played plenty of it in this second half. Goes to Hodges. Hodges quick kick towards the hot spot. Bounces off the chest to Kelly. Couldn't take the mark. And umpire says my ball about 15 metres from home from the home team. And unfortunately, they haven't done much of a whimper this quarter from the Kookaburras. They're looking a little bit flat-footed. Smothered ball hits the hot spot. Ball comes to ground. And it's Anthony Giannini. Doing plenty of damage up front and through the midfield. Slots his first. And one would think this four, four goal margin in favour of the Falcons is probably enough to see them home. But round one action here of the Division 1 Adelaide Football League. Yeah, they've stepped the pressure up again this quarter. Just persistent running, running off the halfback. Just hitting the target. They're, they're hungry for the win, that's for sure. So the pain of Nord Union, the Falcons have kicked the last five goals of this game. And Golden Grove yet to score in the final term. Which is a pretty damning stat at this phase of this final term. Taken out of the ruck there was Kelly. Goes in the direction of Old Tamore. Strong tackle there by Dobie. Holds him up at right half forward. Let's finish it off, boys. Come on. We'll have a secondary ball up, about to 60 from home. Right half forward. Big thump from the ruck. Lewis Johnson comes out towards Hodges. Can't take the mark. Can they build off this back flank here for the Kookaburras? Probably only got a five-minute window of getting themselves back on the game. Pittman switches the ball, heads in the direction of Glenn, won't make it to him. Some good work there by Slater. String of hand passes, goes out wide. Can they get the ball into the hands of Joshua Glenn? No, they can't, and there's a stalemate about 40 metres from home for the Kookaburras. Probably their first real opportunity. Kingsley Grouse to get a goal in this final term. Yeah, it's the first inside 50, I reckon, this quarter. Just a bit sloppy coming in, though. Certainly was. And the Falcons repel pretty quickly. Beautiful looking kick over the top to Nunn. So Nunn settles the ship. Burns a bit of time off the clock. Nunn goes out wide. And that's when perceived pressure kicks in. And as you saw there, that perceived pressure was a, clearly a drop mark for turnover again. Good mark there by Catalano. Vonnie's on again. So Vonnie will line up for his third for the quarter and a game high five goals. Vonnie did not play in the grand final last year, so he's been a great injection into the lineup from last year's grand final team. Come on, Joey, let's go. Probably one of Vonnie's toughest kicks on goal. But if he had a lot of confidence running through his veins, and he slotted it. So Harrison Vonnie, he's got a handful. Bag of five, and that is the exact margin, five goals. Five goals to Viney, and five goals is the margin on the Sportal scoreboard. And we might see the sting taken right out of this one as we drift towards the time on period final turn. It's just been a great target today. And to kick five goals, uh, but I don't think he's missed him any either. No, he hasn't. He looked really dangerous when he was playing up the field in the first half, but he stayed much deeper, particularly in this last quarter, and it's paid dividends for the Falcons. So Ingram's come off the uh, yellow card and injected straight into the middle of the ground, so he's weighed around a bit. It's just been all PNU Falcons. Getting out wide again. 
chance to recover. Long kick inside 50. We'll go over the back. We'll go over the back. Oh, he's just missed that there with Matthew Nunn. It would have topped off a really brilliant four quarter performance from him. So Johnson will take the kick in duties. You suspect this will be a torpedo or a kick straight down the guts. It is. Can add a bit of respectability back to the scoreboard. Unsighted in the last quarter. Had a magnificent, courageous mark. Mackenzie, geez, he's been terrific this afternoon. So just holding up the ball. Umpire's been reluctant to call play on, but I got that far side looking for Wagner. Goes through a few sets of hands and miraculously stays in and finally been called out of bounds or free kick. So a switch back there, goes towards Doby. Looks up, not much to go to. Finds Ingham. He switches back to Shenton. Shenton finds Pittman. Heads out wide. Beautiful looking kick. Lands on the chest of Lachlan Ball. Ball goes inside 50. Dangerous kick. Played on there. It was Bamwell. Joshua Glenn walks into an open goal. And he slots it from about 25. So the first score of this final term going to Joshua Glenn. And unfortunately, it's a, a task too far back for the uh, for the Kookaburras this afternoon. Yeah, maybe a chance just to work on a bit of respectability in the score. Still got seven minutes, Dan. Still got seven minutes, so we've got to work. So it was uh, seven unanswered goals up until that phase. been dominated in the middle today. Centre clearance has been huge in this last quarter in, the middle, in yeah. about five minutes. Comes to Pittman. I say never a hand pass to Ruckman, but unfortunately they had to on that occasion. Johnston comes over the top as the fifth man up. Ball comes out. No mark take and there's a no. That boy says play on, heads out towards Viney. Looks like he's running on a, the fumes of the petrol tickets, big Viney. Goes to Ingham. Ingham all about to get run down. Pulls his kick. Anthopoulos gets the free kick. A bit high there was Tristanzik. Switches play into the middle. Dangerous kick. Hodges intervenes. Nice work there. Goes to Sparkle. Sparkle. Looking for a target at the top of the 50, goes to Kelly. So Kelly, Kelly gets his arms chopped. Probably too far out from home. We need to kick from 55. Umpire says, come back here. No, lets him stay on that. Uh, he's got no one around him. Waits for McKenzie. McKenzie drifts across. So Kelly put a bit of icing on the cake. He's going to have to give it uh, plenty from there. Gives it a good ride. Trips early and stays that way. And a blemish on the scoreboard there to Nicholas Kelly. And a pretty good return. Two goals, two in the ruck this afternoon from the big man. So Johnson takes that kick in duty again. Goes towards Robinson. Good strong punch from behind there. And Pittman keeping in play. Looking to team up with Shenton. Shenton makes the, makes the contest first. The ball is very cleverly outmarked there. By Patrick Sanzo. Been pretty rock solid on that back flank there, Sanzo. Not 15 play on. Gets it back, Sanzo. Gives it to Jonathan Giannini. Giannini deep inside forward 50. No mark taken. Snap out of that contest by Nunn. And what a beautiful finish by Matty Nunn. 
who kicks in second. Talk about icing on the cake. That might be the three votes for Matty, Nat Young, uh, Matty Nunn for this afternoon. He's been consistent all four quarters, and that just puts the icing on the cake for his game. Real, real great effort from Matty Nunn. And that's what you expect from the players coming back to their clubs after SNFL. Yeah, there are plenty of winners all over the field. You look at Nunn, you've got McKenzie down back, the two Giannini's, Jed Spencer's been... Uh, Really useful. Then you got Viney kicks five. Hodges look dangerous on the half forward line. Kelly in the ruck. Kelly in the ruck. Impressive as well. Winners all over the field. And we've got a free kick for someone going inside. No. Goes to Robinson. Looks to hand it off. He does. Goes to Pittman. The little pit bull drills one inside 50. Good mark there. Not paid. It's a Slater. Probably had enough of it for me. Ball comes out towards Banwell. Looking for a late consolation prize, and it's out of bounds on the full. With the free kick to be taken by Jed Spence, and tell you what, I wouldn't mind seeing how many Ks he's put in the Sabo. Because his second half has been tremendous. So the sting right out of this one. And a bit of grand final redemption from last year, as both teams enter the Div 1 for the Painter Norwood Union Falcons. Kick only goes as far as Robinson. Swings onto his trusty right and goes to Joshua Glenn. Two more starts to go in Groves here last year. He uh, came down here and got beaten by Payne. So Glenn kicks from 40 metres out, drifts to the right for a minor score. And on the Sportal scoreboard, 15 10 100. To 10.969. So a 31 point margin. I'm pretty sure Jeremy Cheney would have loved to have heard that before the start of the game if it was a game day predictor. Got McKenzie on uh, with the switch, ignores that, goes short. Goes to Jonathan Giannini. Got McKenzie on. He's also got Haynes on. So the ball ends up with the hands of Mac Haynes. And passes off to McKenzie. Got a free play down the line. Sparkle. Sparkle holds the ball up looking for his options. Sees it. Oh, could have been a push in the back there. And it is. It's Altamore, eh? Colt like figure nine goes in the direction of Hodges. Beautiful mark by Hodges. A bit of cramp sitting in there. So Hodges is going to have to kick from the light tower here. <laughs> Level of difficulty has risen around the light pole. Take a good kick from here. It's had a tremendous game, Hodges. Kicks from the pocket. Jeez, what a beautiful kick! And Hodges drills his first. He's been a very handy campaigner, campaigner this afternoon for the Falcons. As they continue to build on their lead. So eight goal final term here from the Falcons. And I've actually put the Kookaburras to the sword somewhat. Definitely made a statement today, Paynham. They have made a statement here on their home deck. They're not just here to uh, make up the numbers in the Division One company, but the top flight of the Adelaide Footy League. So Kelly in ruck, up against Slater. The work out of that contest was nine. Ends up with the centre clearance in the direction of Altamore. Oh, right. Winners all over the field. Spence goes inside 50 and drills Hodges. So Hodges, can he get two in a minute? Got better and better as the game's wore on. Fairly lengthy run up, 
This is the paint. A little bit of approach. Kicks from 45. Like umpire and player very happy. And Hodges finishes off the good work of his good self and his teammates. And they've slotted another one. So a nine goal final term here from the Falcons. What has been a really crucial and critical statement from the home club. Definitely wasn't expecting the last quarter to be this way. No. <laughs> just, just a dominant display in the middle there. This last quarter. Maybe every uh, centre clearance here. Nine goal, three final term thus far. Time on a final term. Kelly gets the tap, free kick paid, holding on. Crowd's not happy. Crowd a little bit unhappy with the call. Joshua Glenn pumps from right inside the paint of Oval. Heads in the direction of Borg, no mark taken. Sock it off the ground. In a bit of trouble there, the paint of Northern Union defence to Saulus. Things very serviceable. Just over the top of his teammate's head. Some great work there by Blades. Ball comes to ground. Glenn about to weave onto that left foot. Ball moved back into the Anthropolis. No mark taken. And there is a strong mark taken there by Dodson. Been very, very handy on his wing. Sting right out of this one. Remember we mentioned it, Paint of Nord Union had another goal. Such has been their form line. Wagner goes backwards. Goes to Jonathan Giannini. Goes back to Dodson, no mark taken. Good contest. Goes to Glenn, Glenn feeds off Shenton. Can the captain finish off? Bit of a defender's hook on the kick and a minor score. So Sportle scoreboard, 41 point margin in favour of the Nord, Hunnam Nord Union Falcons. And what has been a tremendous last quarter, sizzling on the scoreboard for Sportle. Kick off the ground, it's that hot spot. Strong tackle there by Lenny Pascoe. Big Pascoe with three goals, been pretty healthy returner from the big man. Kick out of that contest from Jed Spence. Had a stack of it. Bit of a hot potato, but it ends up in the hands of Spence, who kicks it straight down the throat of Shenton. Been an honest performer this afternoon for the Kookaburras, the, clap, the captain. And unfortunately, Mitchell Steele will swallow that one up. So only seconds remaining, there's the final siren. As Mitchell Steele steers the ball from the full back line to the back pocket. What an outstanding final turn by the home team. With a nine goal three quarter and end up being a 41 point margin on the sport of scoreboard. Outstanding effort and tremendous final turn from the home team. And slightly embarrassing and a bit of egg on the face for the Kookaburras and what has been a bit of a real blown out final term after leading at three quarter time by seven points. It's a 48 point turnaround. And uh, as you mentioned, Kingsley, the Kookaburra started off season 2023 with a loss on this same deck last year. But kudos today to the Paynham Nord Union Falcons. Oh, it's been pa superb. Paynham pain are way too good in that last quarter. Their pressure, their run, uh, centre, centre clearances, they were just on top all day. Um, yeah, it was uh, a great four quarter effort. Just there, in the end there, they finished off better. And uh, just ran and ran. Heading over to the goal kickers. Five, a big handful of the Harrison Viney. 
Two each to Nicholas Kelly, Jack Hodges and Matthew Nunn and singles to Tyler Sparkle. Thomas Altamore, Brad McKenzie, Tommy Wagner and Anthony Giannini. For the Kookaburras, it was Lenny Pascoe with three goals, two to Josh Glenn, Jake Pittman with singles to him and Cavallaro, Hot Grove and Blades, as well as Slater. Clearly played it, outplayed in this final term and a well-deserved victory and a, a redemption-type victory after uh, a 56-point 50 point shellacking in the grand final give two at Richmond over last year. But that midfield was just absolutely superb there for... Uh, the plan of Nord Union in the final term. Oh, it was just fantastic. Led by uh, Matty Nunn there. They were just the run was superior. And the forward line just switched it on. With the big fella, Harrison Viney, kicking how many? Six, five, five goals. Five, five goals. goals. It's yep. just a fantastic first out effort. Um, just such a great target to look for. And then you've got the two G Giannini boys. It was just, they were just winners all over the ground in that last quarter. So 41 point margin, big thank you this afternoon to the Adelaide Football League. Sportal for the scoreboard as well as Hahn. Filming footy for their footy stats. Dartfish, Farmers League winery down there at Padfaway for their Coach of the Week award. Three bottles of random shot 2021s to the winning coach. And You'd have to say Jeremy Cheney would have to be in the running for that. Those three bottles this week. Roll the dice racing for the Media Award Player of the Year. We can't give out the 3-2-1, but you can find out with all the action tomorrow on our Filming Footy Sports program, Sunday Sports Footy Show. Goal of the week. I don't know who that was today because there's a lot of electrifying goals. And the mark of the week also brought to you by Bianco. Big thank you again to Classic Catches for their support as game day sponsor and programs to fit. The Archies, 3-2-1. I'm thinking that the uh, best player on the ground this afternoon might have been Matty Nunn. Yeah, you've got to agree with that. Yeah. So he'll get, the, uh, he'll get the Archies songs for the best player on the field. The 2-1, you will have those announced tomorrow on the footy show. But big thank you to Jamie Graves on camera and the Kookaburra's vice president, Kingsley Grouse, who's won the meat tray. That's all he's taking home. He's going straight to Adelaide Oval for the big clash with the Port Power this evening. And all the best for you in the season ahead there, Kingsley. Yeah, thanks Thanks for today. It's a great opportunity to have a look at the footy from a different different angle and uh, hopefully uh, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> I hope you're watching close enough because you've got to go and give the best and fairest votes as well. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I've got one of the... Uh, the vote uh, awarders today, so uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough, uh, a tough time doing that. Yeah, it was a real game of uh, swings and roundabouts, and we thought it was ebbs and flows galore, goal for goal each end. But that last quarter sort of blew us away as commentary team, but also the the Kookaburras as well. Oh yeah, that was uh, that was a fantastic last quarter from uh, Paynham. They just they had that pressure all day, but then in the last quarter they just switched it on. And everything comes together for him in that last quarter, and a well-deserved win in the end. It was. It was an outstanding win, and they're not just making up the numbers to suspect Payne of Nord Union to uh, make a real fist for the shit as they walk off the field. Outstanding final term. As the pain of Nord Union Falcons run out, 41 point victors here in round one action, brought to you by Classic Catches against the Gold Grove Cookaburras. That's all the action we've been able to brought to you today. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to catching you at the footy again soon. Bye for now, and all the best for you and your team throughout the season. <laughs>